All right, guys, we are back with the last chapter of Aspen's Route of Please Be Happy. And I am so excited and so sad and so nervous, but also so happy that we are finally here. I get like I said in the last episode, we probably only have about 10 episodes left of this route. And then we have probably about like 20-ish episodes for Juliet's route, which doesn't sound like, which sounds like a lot, okay? Being like, oh guys, we only have th like 30 episodes left. But listen, I love this. I love this and it's ending soon-ish. And by soon-ish, I mean in not that too long. I might be able to, I still have the next few days off of my duties, slaying monsters, saving villages, looking for a way to save the world. But you know what? <sighs> I might be able to finish this, the whole game in that time. And that is simultaneously exciting because like, I've really been wanting one of the big things is I like experiencing things I love, like with other people, whether that be like talking about it or like watching other people play it. And I definitely plan to make videos talking about this game. This this game means like I went on a walk with my dog after I finished the last uh, episodes. What is this? This is this like 34 and 35, I think. Whatever. Uh, not last episode, but the two episodes before. Basically, the way I'm handling recording right now is I'm kind of recording like two or three episodes. Uh, for like the next couple, over the next couple days, including today, I record like two, three episodes, and then I kind of get up and I do some things, whether it be like cleaning, like sorting all the Christmas presents that I got, taking my dog on walks, that kind of stuff, um, along with just other like doing other things. Like I'm going to go, and after this one, I'm probably going to go work out and hang out with some friends, and then tomorrow I'll get back to recording some more, and I don't really have too many plans with people, uh, outside of just like seeing my family generally kind of stuff like that. Um... So yeah, it's just going to be a lot of recording this, and I'm like pretty, pretty okay with that. I do want to play a little bit of Pokemon Violet though over this because I do want to make videos on that. But uh, I'll I'll get to that like when I get to it, you know. I just want to be happy and enjoy. It. Please be happy. So with all that, that's a long intro of me just saying I really love the story. And while Aspen's route may be coming to an end soonish for me. Uh, I've loved my time with this game, and I absolutely look forward to getting to not only finishing this, but also getting into Juliet's route. So, uh, with all that being said, long-winded intro out of the way, let's get into it. Begin Chapter 5, Aspen Route. Straight the- oh, oh, let's do it. Let's go. The familiar jingle of the bell house's door greets me as I walk in for what could be the last time- what? <gasps> oh, she's taking the new job? Once Aspen starts working at the new location next week, I won't have much I won't have much reason to visit this one anymore. Wait. Oh, wait. Hang on. How's that working? So if she cuz she has to move for that, doesn't she? Are we going with her or are we going to do like semi long distance? How's this how's this working, Aspen? The scent of baking bread and brewing coffee mixed with the clean earthiness of the plants is something that I'll miss too. She tilts her head over her shoulder to yell back towards the kitchen. Aspen, your girlfriend's here. <laughs> There's a muffled sound from the back, and a couple of the other patrons turn around to look at the source of the shout. Lena ignores them entirely. She'll be right out. Thanks. Lena, while also moving over to the new Lena will also be moving over to the new location when it opens. Aspen told me she got picked. Aspen told me she got a pit. Ah, I'm sorry. I, I did, like, S an S-tier job in the last episode. Not even gonna lie. I killed in the last episode. I'm starting off so weak this episode with the readings. Aspen told me she got to pick which staff member she wanted to invite to the new store. But she doesn't want Lena to know that. <laughs> she never let it down. Oh, I love Aspen and Lena's relationship. They're such good friends, but Aspen's such a tsundere about it. It's so cute. Since there's no one else in line, I lean against the counter to talk with Lena while I wait for Aspen. I was just thinking about how I'm gonna miss this place. It must be like that for you too, right? Hmm, I don't know. I haven't thought about it too much. Maybe I'll miss it when I get there. <laughs> but why get a head start on that when I've still got another week here? Good point. Now maybe they don't have to move, because if Lena's just like going and she's not even getting like a manager position, maybe it isn't like a whole moving thing. I'm sure Lena and I have different feelings about the Bell House anyway. I have a lot of special treasured memories here. But for her, it's just part of her routine. Kind of like how the library is important to both Aspen and me, but not in the same way. 
As for herself, comes out from the kitchen, carrying a small plate with a strawberry croissant on it. Lena locks on instantly. Oh, you still got croissants left? No. Not anymore. I was saving <laughs> this one for Minho. Wow. Abusing your powers already? <laughs> Not the first time. Besides, I've noticed we go through blueberry muffins suspiciously <laughs> fast when you're working the counter. Oh my gosh, can you say blueberry muffins more? The way she said blue is like, <gasps> it's, it's, you know, not, not to be like that person, but when people have accents and they, they say like that one word, it, it kind of tickles your brain a little bit. It's like, <gasps> say it again, please. Cut to a flashback of Lena just grabbing handfuls of, of blueberry muffins and just shoving them down her throat. Not sneaky enough, so shh. <laughs> Aspen puts a finger to her lips and she hands me the illicit treat. Wow, it's been forever since I've had stolen food. <laughs> it's not stolen. It's just selectively available. Right. I'm going to go select something available from the rack myself. See you later, Miho. <laughs> Bye, Lena. Sure enough, she plucks a muffin from the display case on her way to the back of the store. I take a bite. I take a bite of my croissant, getting strawberries and cream all over my hand. It's it's as messy as it is delicious. Aspen reaches up and wipes away a dollop of cream from my nose. Down and I'll bring you something to drink. What would you like? Oh, it's okay. You don't have to do that. I want to though. What do you have? A tall drinky. I was gonna say a tall drinky, but does that make sense? A tall glassy? I think that might make more sense. You know, call it something like uh, you're a tall glass of water, stuff like that kind of. I've never understood that compliment. I'm going into. Okay, I'm getting too sidetracked here, but I've never understood that compliment, and I've. It's only like occurring to me now, like as I was like, oh, what do we have to drink? Like, oh, a tall glass of you, like. Does I don't, what does that mean? What does it mean to tell someone tell someone that they're a tall glass of water? Moving on. <laughs> well, another foxtail latte, please. <laughs> of course, I don't even have to ask. Uh, it is my drink, after all. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm well aware, and I'll have it right out. I carry my croissant to my favorite seat by the window and sit down, enjoying the familiar view. It's changed a bit since I first sat down here, half a year ago, but it's still mostly the same on the outside. With only a couple weeks left until the new year, people bustle about outside, trying to make the best of what's left in this, of this one. I think I've begun to understand why it's important to people, why it's worth numbering the years when you only get to see so many of them. I spot Aspen approaching, carrying a drink in each hand. I move my plate out of the way to make room for her as, I, as she sits down. Latte for its namesake. <laughs> Thanks. It's delicious. You haven't even tried it yet. So? I don't need to. I just know. It has been a hit with the customers too, I must say. More than <laughs> any of the other beverages I've created. Let's just say you're inspired to make something amazing with this one. Clearly I have my wonderful muse <laughs> for that. You've left a mark on this place too. That's why I get them for free forever, right? Or as long as I'm working here, at least. You know, maybe Lena was a little bit right about me abusing my powers. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell her you said that. But when it's for me, how it, it, it's justified, okay? It's okay. Good. There's a growing list of things not to tell Lena. Aspen takes a sip of her own drink and looks uh, and looks impressed. I almost said unimpressed, and that's the complete opposite. Damn. Good. She removes the lid to let it cool, which isn't something I've seen her do before. What are you doing after this? I'm only on a five, by the way. That's fine. I'll probably just head back to the library. I don't have much else to do today. Jealous? <laughs> Why? What about you? I'm only working half my shift here today. After lunch, I'm going to the new store to help Regina with some final inspections and then doing interviews for new hires. It's... Ooh. Doing oh, I didn't mean to click it. Oh. Day? Anyways, and she, it, she was just saying it's a lot. There aren't that many days left. 
We should have been done with hiring already, but one person changed his mind last minute. So now... She trails off and ends with a sigh, a combination I know all too well. I could go on, but I won't. Who would have thought opening a brand new restaurant would be so much work? Although she laughs, I can't help but feel a little concerned. Although it's been over a month since Aspen decided to take a break from writing, it's still way too soon for her to be overworking herself again. Are you sure you're gonna be alright? I mean, you're gonna be this busy until it opens, right? If not busier, yes. It won't be fun, but I'll manage. Yeah, I've heard that one before, you know. <laughs> I was thinking that same thing and getting scared. Oh, I mean it though, really. The soft opening is in ten days. Even after that, there'll be plenty to do. Maybe more than there is now. But eventually, things will settle down, and I don't have to sell my soul in the process, too. That's the big difference. I can handle being tired. It was the dread and anxiety that I couldn't take. Compared to before, there's something different in the way Aspen speaks. When she would talk about her writing and how she felt, it was obvious that she didn't even believe the words she was saying, but now I can tell from the light in her eyes that she means it. Okay, Aww. okay. You're pretty determined, huh? I am. It felt good to make my mind up about something. I want to give it my very best, so that I can feel good when I look back on it too. Besides, I'd say that growing the new Bell House into Wellington's most popular cafe would be a more than adequate way to be remembered. <laughs> But I'll settle for it being a hidden gem, too. As long as you're selling strawberry croissants and foxtail lattes, I don't see how it could be anything else. Hopefully. Word of mouth from the first few days will be very important. If we fail to make a good first impression, then it could be hard to recover. You're worrying too much. Everyone already loves the Bell House. Mm -hmm, I'm sure mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yours, too. Me? Worry too much? <laughs> no way. <laughs> never, never. Uh huh. <laughs> well, you're probably right. Besides, I have a great team too. With their help, I'm sure it'll turn out okay. That's more like it. You and Lena are gonna do great. I can't let her show me up after all, especially as the store manager. <laughs> oh God. I really am starting to sound like her. But in like a good way, in a good way though. That's another one for the list, right? <laughs> Naturally. Speaking of Lena, I need to get back to work. I'm busy this afternoon, but I'm free tomorrow after work. I'm always free when you are. It's a date then. <sighs> we say goodbye with a kiss like usual before Aswin has to leave. I finish up the last couple bites of my croissant on my own, watching out the window. At one point, even the bell house wasn't here. I don't know what that was. I don't know what was, but it's hard for me to picture it as anything else. At one point, it's just someone's dream, an idea, or a half-formed concept. It took a lot. It took a lot to turn that into a little restaurant that I know and love today. For the new bell house, Aspen will be responsible for the start of its story, for making it more than just a dream. I have a lot of faith in her, though. Aspen's great at stories. Seeing her enthusiasm and determination return is such a relief. Her path forward is clear, at least for now. I'm, uh, I'm glad for her. I really am. Still, I can't help but wish I had something like that for myself, too. A goal to work towards or a dream to fulfill. At first, Juliet let me work at the library so I could have some structure in my everyday life and to get more used to being around other people. But that's not something I need as much anymore. <gasps> Are we going to go looking for, like, a new job or a new... What would Miho... I was gonna, I me I look at her and I'm like she like fashion because like just look at her fit she kills it oh my god so like she could like, go into like fashion or I mean, like she's like in this play stuff she could try going after at, I don't know just like b with her and how she has like this like new perspective like I can see her, like going into so many things and being like yeah that makes sense for me ho I don't mind my job but the fact that I'm here now and come and go whenever I feel like kind of proves uh, yeah 
It it kind of proves that I don't do blah, 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 blah. I don't mind my job, but the fact that I'm here right now and come and go whenever I feel like it kind of proves that what I do isn't a hundred percent necessary. Still, it's home. It's a place to go back to while I figure out what's next. So after cleaning up my trash and finishing my drink, that's exactly what I do. <gasps> what are we doing? At breakfast, Julia and I set up the table and she prepares a place for three people like usual. I to tell you. Aspen won't be here today. Oh, I see. Is everything all right? Yeah, she's just busy. She said she doesn't know how often she'll be able to come by until the new bell house opens. I understand. She must have a lot of responsibilities to take care of right now. Mm-hmm. I was worried about how much work she has to do. I still am. But she's pretty confident in herself. So maybe it'll be okay. <laughs> it's only natural that you'd be concerned. You care about her a lot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm sure she's glad that you worry about her. Even when she tells you not to. I have faith in her too. When Aspen puts her mind to something, she's unstoppable. One of my earliest memories of her came from her first visit to the library when she was trying to find a certain book on the shelves. Only it wasn't there because I was reading it at the time and had it in my room. <laughs> she asked if she could borrow it, promising to return it the next day. I told her she could take more time with it, but she stayed up all night reading it and brought it back like she promised. It wasn't a short book by any means, either. I imagine she's treating her new role with similar focus and determination, which is why I'm sure she'll succeed in the end. Uh, yeah, you're right. I can't spend all my time worrying about her. I have to trust her to live her life, too. Even though I said that last time, I understand it better this time. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. It can be a difficult lesson to learn. That's for sure. Juliet laughs and then we start to eat. It's a little quiet without Aspen or even the sound of her silverware, especially since for Juliet, having a meal is entirely symbolic anyway. I try to eat fast just to get it over with. When we finish and clean up, Juliet lingers around the kitchen for a bit in, the, in that way that means she has something to say. So or not, sure enough, once everything else is done, she clears her throat. Leo, there's something I wanted to ask you. Sure. What's up? This this feels a little serious. What's up? What's Earlier up? this morning, I saw that I'd received a reply to a message that I never expected to be answered. A couple months ago, uh. I managed to find someone online that I thought might be related to your friend Zhang Ying and reached out to uh. confirm. What? They never got back to me. And so I didn't mention it to you. But then today, she finally responded and said that yes, they are distant relatives. She said that if you'd like to talk with her, she'd be happy to tell you a bit about Xiong Ying, or at least what she knows. Is that something you'd like to do? Oh. Well. I guess you wouldn't be shocked that... I never even thought about them maybe having a family. I thought that might be the case. You're welcome to think about it and get back to me later. In my mind, Zhang Yin was always alone, but with me, they belonged to the forest and to the rest of the world equally. But it makes sense that they really weren't alone. They had people, that they had people who loved them too. It hits me that there's so much I don't know about Zhang Yin. Really, I barely know anything. Every minute shared with me only represented a very small part of their life. In a sense, they may as well be a stranger. I'm a little afraid that knowing more about them could change how I feel could change how I feel about them too. But I decide that's a risk I'm willing to take. I'd rather know more about who they really were. I don't need to. I'd like to talk to her. Wonderful. I'll let her know then. I believe she's in America, so our times are fairly different. Shall I see if tomorrow evening would work? Sure, that sounds good. Thanks. And thanks for tracking her down and messaging her in the first place. 
Yeah, that's that's awesome. Oh, I'm actually really excited for that. See, I'm, I'm glad Juliet didn't completely, like, totally fade into the background and that she's still around, because, like, every time we talk, it's always so nice. It's my pleasure. It's what I specialize in, after all. I'll let you know tonight if I hear back from her. Okay. I'm going to see Aspen once she gets off work. But I'll be back sometime this evening. I'll see you then. Have a great day, Mio. Have a good sleep. <laughs> There's a lot that I'm looking forward to. There's a lot that I'm looking forward to talking about with Aspen today. I set myself up in the library and take care of my chores like usual. It was hard, about, hard to think about anything else. The afternoon sunshine draws us to the... The sunshine... The afternoon sunshine draws us to the park once Aspen gets off work. Instead of staying indoors at her apartment or the library, she tells me about her day at work, and in exchange, I tell her about my upcoming call. Wow! Juliet's incredible, isn't she? I had no idea she was setting that up. <laughs> me either. It was a total surprise. She said she sent the message a long time ago, though, and it took months before she got a response. Well, I can certainly empathize with that. At least in this case, the response turned out to be a good one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hopefully. I'm a little bit nervous, though. About what? Just about what they might say. What if it turns out Jelena's totally different from what I thought? What if they were actually a terrible person? Then that would be true whether you knew it or not. They do say ignorance is bliss for a reason. If I were you, though, I would want to know the truth no matter what. That's what I was thinking. Maybe someday I'll be able to do something without worrying about it the whole time. <laughs> no, that's life. If you figure out the secret, let me know. <laughs> Lena sure isn't sharing it. I think she's somewhere around here too. At least she mentioned that before she clocked out. Is that why we're here? Not at all. <laughs> I adore Lena, but I'll be spending more time with her than without her for the next month. I just wanted to appreciate the fresh air before I forget what it's like. Put a ton of plants in your bell house too. Did you know that plants help us breathe? I just learned that on TV. <laughs> I was aware, but I'm glad for you. Plants are on the list though. I also want to put in a reading corner with a small library for people to <gasps> browse while they visit. Yes. <gasps> yes. Oh my gosh. Unironically. Uh, I don't need to go to Barnes & Noble for a long time or any kind of bookstore just because I have so many books to read. But once I finish all those, uh, my goal, just partially inspired by this game, uh, well, uh, not a goal, but a want of mine is to go there, try out a good coffee for the first, I mean, not really the first time, but like the third time ever, and just read while I'm there. I want to get a good book, get a nice coffee and read while I'm there because it's just such a vibe, even like not being a coffee drinker. I, I, the, it's just like a vibe having like a little coffee place in a Barnes and Noble. It's so fun. Regina's allowing me to set it up and decorate how I see fit. So I'm being as self-indulgent as I can. <laughs> a cafe with a library in it? That sounds perfect for you. Where would you get the books from? Juliet? I was planning to ask her for some, yes. As well as a few from my own collection and Lena's and anyone else who'd like to donate. Maybe Juliet would even let us share books, so you can return them at either place. Ooh. How would you keep track of it? Would you hire someone to do it? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Well, I happen to know a certain someone <gasps> who's very experienced in that position. But no, we would simply have to use the honor system, like Juliet used to. I still don't get how she doesn't worry about people stealing them. I mean, I do, but I don't. I think it makes sense. Maybe it's even impossible to steal from a library. After all, they're meant for sharing books. If you take one home and give it to a friend instead of returning it, it still served its purpose. That's fair. That's, that's an interesting and wholesome way of looking at it. Or if you hold on to it for years and then only return it much later, you still returned it. That's the beauty of books. 
They can always wait. <laughs> my New Year's resolution is to get through at least half of my backlog, personally. Yeah, oh yeah, good luck with that. The backlog never goes away. Your New Year what? Resolution. It's like a goal that you set for yourself for the year. And then usually give up on by February, but let's not forget <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> too honest, too honest, Aspen. That's chill, chill. Neat. Did you have one this year? I did. It was to finish and hopefully release a book. It may not have come true, but I'm happy with the outcome all the same. I should try to think of one for next year myself. Maybe I'll try to get through half my reading backlog, too. Oh? You have a reading backlog? Do you have one of those? <laughs> is, it, is it just going to be Aspen's book? Because if so, that'd be real cute. So I'm doing good already. <laughs> Maybe it'll be to read 10 books. Or 100 books. I don't know what a good number to try is. Not 100. That's too much. I have a friend who reads a ton, like was finishing a book almost every... Uh, like a book every couple days and they're only at 91 right now i think their goal is to maybe try to get 200 i told them that they should i don't know if they're actually going to try for it but they only have four days left so fingers crossed probably somewhere in between you don't have to make it about reading though you don't have to make one at all if you don't want to only if it helps motivate you mm, i'll think about it I've been thinking that I need something else to do with my life as it is. Something else? Yeah. Don't get me wrong, the library's fine and all. But I'm not really excited about it the same way you are about the bell house. Yesterday, I was thinking about how Julia doesn't need me to help her. She just gave me the job as a favor, even if she said otherwise. I don't really need that favor anymore, though. You've outgrown it. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm-hmm. I have other things I can rely on. One of them links arms with me. Oh, stop! Not far away, there's an empty bench alongside the path, and Aspen leads us to it so we can sit down. We've been walking for almost an hour now, so a break is nice. Aspen takes off her hat and sets her purse on the ground between us while I stretch out my legs. We're not the only ones out here enjoying the afternoon. The park's alive and bustling. Bikers, joggers, dog walkers, and skaters all dodge around each other. Plus the regular pedestrians like Aspen and me. Some of the dogs even run around off their leashes, ditching the road entirely. People are playing all kinds of sports too, and I can even tell the difference between some of them by now. I'm still a bit confused on what football is though. Is it is it American football or is it football? <laughs> what? Hello? Game? I don't get why it does that sometimes. I even spot Lena, though she doesn't see us. Aspen pokes me in the side. Think he's lost? <gasps> Across from us, a dog sn is sniffling around. There's a break in the foot traffic around for... Uh, there's a break in the foot traffic around us for now, so I don't see anyone watching him. probably around here somewhere. Maybe he ran ahead of them. The dog looks over at us like he knows we're talking about him. He takes a couple steps towards us, sniffing the air with his tail wagging just a little bit. Come here. Here, puppy. <laughs> the puppy, Aspen's right about that, slowly creeps closer towards Aspen's outstretched hand. I sit still, not wanting to spook him. He seems friendly, but cautious. One step, two steps, he never stops sniffling. Then he runs forward, bites the handle of Aspen's purse, and takes off with it. What? Aspen jumps to her feet. So it's like... It's totally like a shapeshifter or something. The dog doesn't even look back as it runs away, dragging Aspen's purse with it. The concepts start to spill as they go. I like how fun this music is. I run after the puppy who's going further into the park, not wasting my breath shouting. I've been running way too much these past couple months. I could transform, but I think that... I, but I think that'd probably scare him even more. I know better than to chase a dog, but I don't have much other choice. I can hope I hope I can just wear him out and then catch him. Glancing back, I see Aspen falling behind me, gathering up everything that she can. The puppy also looks back at me every now and then, changing directions at random. Oh, is it just a normal puppy who just happens to be a purse thief? Gotcha! Some of the other people who see us lunge for the dog or try to block him off. 
Wait, some of the people, other people who see us launch for the dog or try to block him off, but he dodges out all of them and keeps running. I'm a little confused. Some of the other people who see us launch for the dog or try to block him off, but he dodges all of them and keeps running. I'm a little impressed. He zigzags again, but this time it's lucky for me. He's headed straight hey, towards Lena. Yeah. She spins around to see me, and I can tell she's trying to process what's happening. The dog is closer to her than, it is, than he is to me. Luckily, my words get through. Lena crouches, already warmed up. The puppy sees her and starts to go in a different direction, away from both of us. <laughs> Lena jumps from him and flaps her wings to carry herself even further. He, she crashes to the ground in front of the dog, who scrambles over himself to try and stop and turn again. I reach them just in time to grab him by the scruff of his neck. He immediately drops Aspen's purse like, like a thief who's been caught. Not that I would know. Aspen herself is slowly approaching, her arms full as she tries not to drop anything. I make sure Aspen's purse is safe before I let go of the puppy, who's been tossing and turning in my arms. Aspen walks up and wags a finger at him. Hasn't anyone taught you any manners? No. <laughs> the dog walks away from us, but not very far, so he can watch instead. So he can watch instead? He reminds me a little bit of Silver. I hope he doesn't turn into a person. Uh, I've seen that dog around before. Pretty sure he's a stray. I haven't heard of him taking anyone's stuff like that, though. Got anything good in your purse? Not if you're a dog. There's just... While digging around her pur now refilled purse, Aspen stops and then pulls out a smushed plastic wrapper. <laughs> the dog wags his tail and barks in Aspen's direction, and she frowns. She unwraps rem the remnants of her sandwich and tosses it to the dog, who gobbles it down in just a couple bites before looking at us for more. If he's a stray like Lena said, that could be the best meal he's had in days. Lena and, I Lena and I both are empty-handed. What should we do with him? What if he's not a stray and someone's looking for him? Mm, we must not be looking very hard. I've seen him a couple days in a row now. Poor thing. He seems so friendly when he isn't running off with my things. <laughs> <laughs> I stoop down to try and pet him, and he lets me. He even licks my hand a couple times. Maybe we can take him back to the library with us. Juliet might know what to do. Are we about to get a pet dog? She is known for helping strays. I'm not sure how to get him back there, though. Was that it? Was that a joke about Miho? He doesn't look too heavy. Carry him. Yeah. Oh, why not? If you'll let me pick him up, at least. Just please be careful. I will. I crouch down and approach him slowly, keeping my hand out for him to sniff. I also try to wag my own tail to help reassure him. Instead of running, that's so cute. <laughs> Instead of running away, he just flops onto his back, asking for a belly rub. I do that with one hand while I slide the under beneath, other beneath him. He's so lean that I can see his ribs. Then I scoop him up. He woofs in surprise, but doesn't try to escape. Once I get him situated, he's pretty so calm. Bad. Both Aspen and Lena crowd in to pet him now that he can't get away. He sits there and takes it all in stride. I'll text Juliet so that she isn't totally blindsided when we get there. See you tomorrow, Lena. Later, boss. Later, Miho. Oh, later, puppy. <laughs> Still leaning against my shoulder, the dog doesn't mind when Aspen moves his. Wait. Still leaning against my shoulder, the dog doesn't mind when Aspen moves his paw to wave goodbye to Lena. <laughs> oh. Alright, and I think with that being said, I should probably end up ending the episode there for now, but I will be back with some more. We'll be back with some more, obviously. Um, After, like, how everything was silver and how, like, big all that felt, I'm glad, like, this was a really chill, chill start to the chapter. I like that a lot. Uh, So, yeah, with all that being said, I'll see all you beautiful people in the next one. Bye-bye!